So uh, continuing on with our discussion of nomenclature, let's work on another example as part of our group work. And so let's try to identify and name all substituents in the following molecule and then name the parent chain. So really don't be shy to utilize the annotate feature and I'll give everyone about two, let's go with three to four minutes to try and name this compound following the IUPAC method that we discussed last class session. Um, make sure, I would really recommend that you try to number your carbons using the annotate tool so that way you can identify which numbering method gives you the lowest locant numbers, the lowest carbon numbers for your substituents. So uh, let's get started on this example and don't be shy to share any questions or proposed responses that you have verbally or in the chat and I'd be happy to provide feedback. And we'll discuss this example in about three minutes. So we have our first proposed response. If anyone would like to try using the annotate tool to show your proposed carbon numbers, um, that would be invaluable in trying to name this compound. So the numbering method and numbering choice looks reasonable to me, um, but is the substituent at carbon two an ethyl or a methyl group? Other than that, the, the proposed name looks great. So let's discuss this first example now that we've had a, a reasonable response with the supporting annotation. So, just to entertain different numbering methods. So first things first, I circle my chains and I identify which chain is the longest. So four, four, three. So I'm gonna find and count in a way that hits as many of my longest chains as possible. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That gives me the longest possible chain. Does everyone see how that shortcut works? Does everyone see how that shortcut works? Does that make sense to everyone, that, that trick that I just used? Okay, now we count in the opposite direction. Okay, and now we look at our locant numbers. So in this case, we have five propyl and eight methyl for our red ink counting method compared to our dark ink counting method of two methyl, five propyl. As we can see, the counting method in black gives us the lowest locant numbers. So we call this 2-methyl-5-propyl, and then nine carbons is no name. 
Does this make sense to everyone? Any questions on this? Really don't be shy to ask if you have questions. So let's keep going now and let's work on another example. I'm a big believer in the idea that practice makes perfect for these types of problems. So I'd like you to focus on the following molecule and I'd like you to provide an IUPAC name and really um, just to check, is everyone able to access the annotate feature? You can annotate with your mouse or if you're on a tablet, you can use the touch features for annotation. It's really helpful at mimicking the kind of physical motions and steps and things that you would write out in a similar manner that you would on an exam. Um, so I really encourage you to try using the annotate tool to physically write out your carbon numbers. So let's try to get a name for this compound. And I'd like to see a few responses in the chat or verbally. And if you have any questions, don't be shy to ask either in the chat or verbally. Um, and the more questions you ask or the more proposals you have for the name of this compound, the more I can provide directed feedback. We'll discuss this example in about three minutes. And I'd greatly appreciate it if we have a student share their proposed carbon numbers using the annotate feature. And don't be shy, multiple students can draw in the same class whiteboard. Perfect, so we have one proposed carbon numbering method. Would anyone like to share an alternative carbon numbering method? And then don't be shy also to share a proposed name, but thank you for sharing. That first carbon numbering method looks pretty reasonable, actually. Does anyone have an alternative numbering method that they'd like to share? And don't be shy if your responses are different from your classmates or the same. The more responses we have, the more we can entertain um, different possibility. Okay, so we have two possible numbering methods and using our rules, is there a method, is there a numbering method that is preferred in this case? Is there a numbering method that would be preferred in this case? Yeah, blue is preferred only slightly because it has the most branching, exactly right. But the numbering method in green is important to consider because if you, if you don't draw it out, you can't necessarily see that connection. So thank you for both of you for sharing. Now let's try to get some names for this compound. Let's try to get some names for this compound. And we'll discuss in about another minute to a minute and a half.
So we have one proposed name in the chat, one proposed name. Um, let's try to get a few more proposed names, even if they're the same. I just want to see everyone's thoughts so that, and if a name is different, the differences between student responses can help me understand how students are processing these problems and it can help me provide clear examples to clarify um, some of the rules for naming. We'll discuss in about another 30 seconds. Would anyone else like to share a proposed name for this compound? Would anyone else like to share a proposed name or a part that they're unsure about? There's no no, no penalty for sharing. Um, and the more, more, more responses we have, the more we can have a nuanced discussion. So let's discuss this example. Let's discuss this example. Okay, so following our numbering method, we concluded that the numbering method as shown is preferred because we have the most branching on our chain and the longest possible chain. Entertaining are two potential possibilities for our numbering methods. We either have 2-methyl-6-ethyl-7-methyl or as an alternative, we have 2-methyl-3-ethyl-7-methyl. And as we notice, the numbering method using the black ink is preferred. So we'd write this as 3-ethyl-2,7-dimethyl-octane. Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions on this example? If not, let's keep going. When you're naming complex substituents or branch substituents, you place numbers on the substituent starting from the carbon attached to the main chain and moving away from the main chain. You name the substituents on the side chain and number the side chain substituents based on their carbon number in the cyan chain. If the substituent has a common name, use the common IUPAC name. Okay, so let, let's see how this would function. So first and foremost, here is our side chain. So we number it one, two, three, four, starting from the carbon attached to our main chain, moving out. So this side chain would be called 2-methyl-butyl. And this side chain is at carbon six. So we call this 6-2-methyl-butyl-undecane. Does that make sense to everyone? Does that make sense to... Where does the un come from? Uh, because there is 11. Oh, right. Yep. I see. Thank you. Does that make sense? Would someone like to tell me, what is the common name of 2-methyl-butyl? Is there a common name that we can use? Is there a common name... So what do we call the 2-methyl-butyl name? What is the common name for 2-methyl-butyl? Is there a common name that we can use?
it's okay if, if if you don't have it you can you can write out the full procedural name and you'll receive full credit let's look let's look at an example where and let's talk about some common named substituents just as a refresher so propyl and isopropyl if your main chain is attached at the second carbon in your propyl chain, we call this an isopropyl side chain. Butyl chains, N-butyl attached at the main position. You don't have to indicate that it's N, you just say butyl. Isobutyl, it's attached at a primary carbon, but you have another carbon attached so that you have a tertiary carbon in the middle. Tert butyl, your substituent is attached at the tertiary carbon. Seek butyl, it's attached at a secondary carbon. This should be reviewed. Does this look familiar to everyone from last lecture? Does this look familiar to everyone? These different side chains of propyl and butyl chains? Can I get some confirmation in the chat that this looks familiar? Okay, perfect. So the pentyl side chains, we have the n-pentyl side chain. We also have the isopentyl side chain, where again, we're attached to the primary carbon and we have a tertiary carbon. Neopentyl, we have a quaternary carbon and the main chain is attached at a primary carbon. These are all of the side chain names that I'm expecting you to know and be familiar with. So let's apply what we've learned here and let's identify each substituent and indicate the systematic and IUPAC name for each substituent. Okay, so let's start off with the most straightforward part here. Let's number our carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So another undecane chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay. So now dissecting this side chain, what do we call this side chain? What do we call that side chain? Where our main chain is attached to the secondary carbon. What do we call that side chain? What do we call this? Is it isopropyl? Yes, exactly right. So this is isopropyl. So this side chain is known as isopropyl, otherwise known as ipropyl. You can also call it 1-methyl, one 1-methyl one ethyl, though as you can see, it's better to use the, the common IUPAC name. Okay, what about this substituent at carbon seven? What do we call that? What do we call that? Looking at our table, what's the name for that? Is it ibutyl? Let's take a look. Is it seek butyl? Uh, Exactly right, it's seek butyl. So in seek butyl, the main chain is attached at the secondary carbon. Isobutyl, it's attached at a primary carbon and the butyl chain also has a tertiary carbon. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect, perfect. They're very close. So, um, so we call this seek butyl or S butyl. Now, when we remember our rules, I'm going to underline the iso prefix and remember that we care about the iso prefix when it comes to alphabetical order. 
it doesn't pop up and it's not relevant in this example, but it's important just to make a mental note of that. Okay, so now that we have our locant numbers, we'd name this as four isopropyl, seven, oh, whoops, whoops, butyl should be in front. So this would be seven, seek butyl, four isopropyl, undecane. Okay, perfect. Another name for seek butyl would be one methylpropyl, but normally people don't call seek butyl one methylpropyl because they would get they would get at least a few odd looks if you if you said that name as people are more used to the common IUPAC name for these side chains. And this is useful when you're doing searches for your molecules because it can provide you a way of efficiently searching for a desired structure. So just to check our work using Marvin Sketch. Yep, our response looks perfectly correct. Any questions on this example where we have branched side chains? If not, I'm now going to let you loose to work on the following example. So I'd like you to name the main chain and the side chain using your appropriate carbon locant numbers. And I'd like you to provide a full IUPAC name for this compound. And we'll discuss this example in about two to three minutes. So let's work through this example. And let's try to get a few proposed name for, names for this compound in the chat. And we'll discuss in about two minutes. So we already have some wonderful responses in the chat. Let's try to get a few more and we'll discuss in a minute. Okay, so let's discuss. So as we've noted, what do we call this group? What do we call this side chain? What do we call this side chain? Turn 
tert butyl, exactly, right? So we call this 4-T butyl heptane. Or this T-butyl chain can also be called 1-1-dimethyl-ethyl, though no one really uses that. Perfect, perfect. So we're getting used to the idea of naming complicated side chains. Let's talk about now, when we talk about systematic names for alkanes, let's expand our rules a little bit. So we know about writing our locant numbers, we know about ordering our branches and substituents in alphabetical order. So prefixes cyclo, iso, and neo are considered part of the group name, so they are alphabetized. We ignore the prefixes di, tri, tetra, tert, seek, etc. when alphabetizing. Really be careful with this. Um, finally, that's the only new revision that we need to keep in mind is that we want to make sure our alphabetized side chains are correct. So let's look at some examples where these naming rules, you can encounter some issues. First, you want to choose a numbering method that gives the smallest starting number. So in this case, we number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rather than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The reason for that, two, five, five beats out three, three, six, because our first locant number is smaller. You want the smallest locant number from the smallest starting locant number to the largest. So the moment one of your locant numbers is smaller, you go with the numbering method that gives you the smallest locant number. Does that make sense to everyone? Does this idea make sense? Can I get some confirmation in the chat that everyone's comfortable with this idea? Perfect. So let's look at another example. If there is a tie, then the second number should be as small as possible. So for example, we use the numbering method one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rather than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The reason for this numbering method is because we have a locant number of two in both of these cases, but our second locant number is three compared to a second locant number of five, and three beats five. Three is smaller than five. Does that make sense? Does that make sense how to handle ties for our first locant number? Is everyone comfortable with this idea? So if there is a tie in our first number, we want our second locant number to be as small as possible. So we choose 236 trimethyl for our locant numbers rather than 235 because 3 is less than 5. Perfect, perfect. Continuing on, if there is a tie in our locant numbers and if the previous rules didn't break the tie, you assign the lowest number to the substituent that is first in alphabetical order. So for example, 4-ethyl-5-methyl is preferred over 5-ethyl-4-methyl because ethyl is first alphabetically. 
Does this make sense? So as a last tiebreaker, you use alphabetical order. Continuing on, these rules also apply to cycloalkanes, where we, example, we choose to count clockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six, versus counterclockwise. The reason for that, we want lower carbon locan numbers and one one beats out one three. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Perfect. So let's try to name the following compound. And although it doesn't look like these examples are different, these examples are an order of magnitude harder because they require you to know the naming rules with a greater level of precision. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my first proposed naming method. So I'm gonna number using the, the dark ink and then number in red ink. Okay, and now I'm gonna look at my locant numbers. So I have two methyl, four ethyl, compared to three ethyl, five methyl, so I choose the numbering method in black and my main chain has six carbons. So I call this 2-methyl-4-ethyl-hexane that I rewrite as 4-ethyl-2-methyl-hexane. Perfect, perfect. So, now that you've seen a representative example, I'd like you to try to name the following molecule. So let's work on this molecule and naming this molecule. And don't be shy to use the annotate tool to write out your carbon numbers. And you may want to use a few different colors to show alternative methods of numbering. So let's try to get some proposed names for this compound and we'll discuss in about three minutes. And I would greatly appreciate if someone shares their proposed carbon numbering using the annotate tool. And really don't be shy about it.
So we have one proposed numbering method and that looks good to me. Importantly, we identified the longest chain with the greatest amount of branching. Now let's try to get some names for this. Let's try to get some names for this chain. So we have a proposed name and it follows alphabetical order. Perfect. So we're actually ready to discuss this example as we have a few reasonable responses. Okay, so let's put our carbon numbers in place. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so looking at our locant numbers now, there are two potential methods of counting to give us an eight carbon chain. So the locant number method in black is chosen because it gives us the smallest numbers and that gives us two, three, dimethyl, four, ethyl, Oh, sorry, four propyl. Uh, wait. That's an ethyl chain, yes. Four ethyl octane. So just be really careful with counting the carbons in your side chain. But the response I saw in the chat in terms of locant numbers and main chain numbers and alphabetical order was perfect. But because it's an ethyl chain, because it's an ethyl chain, we have to change our alphabetical order slightly. So this would be 4-ethyl-2-3-dimethyl-octane. Does this make sense to everyone? Does this example make sense? Perfect, perfect. So just be really careful with your locant numbering and naming of your side chains because it affects the alphabetical order of your side chains in the final name. So let's keep working on, on some examples. And this these next few examples are gonna get a little bit more difficult. So let's start with this first example. I'd like to have students share their numbering methods using the annotate tool. And I'd like to see some proposed names in the chat from at least two to three students. Just so that way we have a pool of responses. Don't worry if your response is different from other students. The more variation we have in the responses, the more I can identify and provide clarification on parts that you're unsure about. And we'll discuss this example in about three minutes. And if there are any questions I can address while you work through these examples, just let me know and I'd be happy to provide feedback.
And if anyone would like to share their proposed carbon numbers using the annotate feature, I would greatly appreciate it. And multiple students can annotate at once on the same class whiteboard. So I greatly appreciate some shared annotations and some proposed names for this compound. Notice in this structure we have a complex side chain. So you may have to be careful with how you name this complex side chain. That's the part I'm having trouble with. I know it's on carbon five, but I don't know how to name that chain. Would you be able to share your carbon numbers? And that way we can, we can build on this as a class. Okay, perfect, perfect. So what do we call this side chain? What's the name for that? If we look, if we look in our guide in this note set, what do we call that side chain? Isopropyl, right? Yep, exactly. Okay, and what do we call this side chain where our main chain is attached at the second carbon in a butyl chain? Is it seek butyl? Yep, exactly right. So then for isopropyl 5 seek butyl, no name? Yes, but remember which prefix is counted as a as is counted in alphabetical order? Our ice it's which ISO, right? ISO, yep. And then seek is not. Seek is not. So butyl goes first, followed by isopropyl. Exactly right. Perfect, perfect. So we're actually, with, with contributions from the class, we're actually ready to discuss this now. So we've identified at carbon number four, we have an isopropyl. At carbon five, we have a seek butyl. So we call this 5S-butyl four isopropyl and nine carbons, so this is no name. Does this example make sense to everyone? Is everyone comfortable with this example? Any questions on this? Can I get some responses in the chat that everyone got a similar response when they tried to name this? Would you like more time on these examples? Would you prefer if I give everyone more time for these? Or is the amount of time I'm giving everyone okay for, for these naming examples? I just wanna make sure everyone has enough time to formulate their own solution. And then when we go over it, you can correct your solution. Is the timing okay for these examples? So let's work on another example and let's take about three to four minutes to work on this example. So there, it's most, the, the IUPAC rules, I, I, I don't know the exact reason for why isopropyl is given such a special designation. It just, I, I think it's set up because it's trying, what the goal of IUPAC rules is to have systematic, well-defined methods of sorting your different groups in alphabetical order and I think by alphabetizing the ISO prefix, it prevents ambiguous names. So it's, it's just a, each of these rules are designed to make it so each structure has its own unique name. But I can't think of the exact reason for why ISO is special, but I think it's just to avoid two structures ending up with the exact same name and then the IUPAC rules won't have use in that case. Mm -hmm. So let's work on this next example and really don't be shy to try using the annotate feature to write out your carbon numbers. And if you need any help using the annotate feature, 
Um, it's also great for note taking, by the way, if you're taking notes on your own um, on your own document. It's great for note taking for structures. Um, and if you need help with that, just let me know and I'd be happy to work with you during office hours to show you how to use the annotate tool. So let's work on this example. I'd like to see some proposed names and some proposed carbon numbers. Don't be shy to share it in the chat or to share your responses verbally. Um, the more responses I see, the more I can understand how the class is working through these problems. Yep, you always have to aim for the, for the longest chain. So this one's a little bit tricky. And that's part of why I want students to show their carbon numbers, because that helps me understand what students are thinking when they're going about the name. So when in doubt, don't necessarily freeze up, just share, share where you're at, and I'd be happy to provide feedback. And likewise on the exam, show as much of your work as possible, as that allows me to more effectively provide feedback. And you may want to put your different numbering methods with different colors. So you want the chain that has the most branches. Um, there's a fourth branch coming from the bottom. I don't know who did that annotation, but there's a fourth branch on one of the um, carbon chains. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about that. So another potential numbering, we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that opens us up to having another branch on our chain. But the proposal in green is, is, is quite good. It's quite good. Now that we have these different numbering methods, let's focus on writing out a name for each of these compounds. Let's focus on writing out a name for each of these compounds. Let's try to get a, per, a few proposed names in the chat. Does anyone have a proposed name that they'd like to share for this compound?
What does everyone think for this example? Would anyone like to share a proposed name for this compound in the chat or verbally? Really don't be shy. I'd like to get at least one response or one to two responses for the proposed name before we discuss. So we have a proposed name in the chat of 3-ethyl-2,5-dimethyl-4-propylheptane. So does anyone have another response before we discuss? And then we can double check um, and we can go through this together as a class. So let's clear these annotations and then let's discuss. So first we need to identify the longest chain with the greatest number of branching. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's perfect. Um, notice how we have one, two, three, four branching points, and this is the longest chain. Let's check multiple numbering methods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So noticing for the numbering method in black, we have the smaller locant numbers. We have two methyl, five methyl, three ethyl, four propyl. So we would name this chain in alphabetical order as three ethyl, two, five, dimethyl, four, propyl. You don't have to state n propyl, just propyl, and then heptane. Does this idea make sense to everyone? Does this naming make sense to everyone? And if you want specific feedback on your proposals, don't be shy to submit them in the chat publicly or, or via direct chat as a private message. And I'd be happy to provide feedback. Any questions on this example? So we want the longest chain with the most branching and we count in a way that gives us the smallest locant numbers. Does that make sense? Everyone comfortable with this example? Anything that I should elaborate in this example? If not, let's keep going now. And just as a reminder, cycloalkyl groups, cyclic groups are the main chain only if they have more carbons than the substituent chain. Otherwise, you name the cycloalkyl group like a substituent. So let's look at case one, where we have a cycloalkyl main chain. So I'll go first here. I'm gonna number my carbons. So there are two numbering methods. I can either do clockwise or counterclockwise. My cycloalkyl group is the main chain because it's the biggest chain with five carbons. So I have the choice of either one methyl, what do we call this? What do we call this? What do we call the, the substituent at carbon three? What do we Isopropyl. call that substituent? Isopropyl, exactly right. So I have a choice of one methyl three isopropyl or one isopropyl three methyl. And which wins out? Which name is correct? Which name follows alphabetical order? which name follows alphabetical order. Let's look. So if we go from structure to name, do we count this I? Is this I considered part of alphabetical order? Do we count the ISO prefix? Remember that the ISO prefix is not counted for alphabetical order. So then we're comparing M for methyl versus P for propyl. So the name in black would be preferred. Does that make sense? 
Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions on this example? So let's work on this next problem and let's try to name the following compound. And just be really careful with your alphabetizing for this next compound. I try to pick examples that are very common trick questions or very common questions similar to those on like an AC, ACS exam, for example. So let's focus on this example and let's try to name this cyclic compound. So this really tests your knowledge of alphabetical rules. And let's try to get some proposed names in the chat before we discuss. Would anyone have a proposed response for the name for the structure on the right? Don't be shy to share your proposed response in the chat and we'll discuss in about another two minutes. And I'm entering all of the structures in to Marvin sketch just to double check our proposed names. Would anyone like to have a proposed name or would anyone like to propose a name for the second cyclic structure on the right? Let's try to get at least one response in the chat before we discuss this example. And we'll talk about this example in about another minute. Okay, so let's let's talk about this example. So we have two numbering methods. One, two, going counterclockwise or clockwise, one, two. So I'm gonna need your help for this one. What do we call this group here? What do we call this group here? Is it seek butyl? Yep, exactly right. We call this seek butyl. Okay. Do we care about seek as a prefix for alphabetical order? 
does seek matter as a prefix? No, right? No, exactly right. So we only care, we're comparing butyl to methyl. And which group is first alphabetically, B or M? B. E. Yep, so we call this 1-S-butyl, 2-methyl, and what do we call the main chain? What do we call the main chain? So in this first case, we have a cyclopen oh, chain chain. In this case, we have a cyclohexane chain, hex, because we have six carbons. So this would be one seek butyl, two methyl cyclohexane. Does this make sense, Tevro? Any questions on this example? If not, let's do one more set of cases for this supplemental lecture. Let's look at case number two, where we have a cycloalkyl substituent. In this case, we have a six carbon cyclohexane chain, but our main chain has a total of eight carbons. Note, as a rule, when you're writing your longest chain, you never go into your cycloalkane substituent, okay? So you never count into your cycloalkane substituent. So let's look at our two numbering methods. In So in this case, let's we name our cycloalkyl chain as a normal substituent. So we have two cyclohexyl, four ethyl, five methyl, six methyl. I'm just doing uh, my basic count of each, each substituent right now. Let's look at our numbering method in red. We have 3-methyl, 4-methyl, 5-ethyl, 7-cyclohexyl. Okay, so my question to you, first and foremost, is the cyclo prefix counted for alphabetical order? Is the cyclo prefix counted for alphabetical order? Let's look and let's go back to our rules. Let's go back to our rules. It's really important that you get these distinctions down. They are alphabetized. Yep, so if we look in our rules, cyclo, iso, and neo are alphabetized. Really important to keep that in mind. It's good that we noted that, otherwise our name would be a little odd. And if you try, the way you can tell if your name's a little bit off is if you Google search the name and the computer starts to correct you, likely there is a minor error in your proposed name. Um, okay, so cyclo, okay. Looking at our locant numbers, which of the following, which of the following numbering methods gives us the lowest locant numbers? Which of the following numbering methods gives us the lowest locant numbers? The numbering method in black, exactly right. So we're gonna name this in alphabetical order as two cyclohexyl because C is first alphabetically, four ethyl, and then 5,6-dimethyl. Remember that the D in dimethyl, the di is not Our longest chain has eight carbons, so we call this an octane chain. Does this make sense to everyone? Is everyone comfortable with this example? Okay, 
So let's do one independent example where you work in groups as a class and you share a complex chain and a cyclic chain. And make sure you're really careful with your alphabetical rules in this case. So don't be shy to share your proposed annotations for your carbon numbers and your proposed names in the chat. If you have any Does anyone have any questions that I can address when we're working through these examples? ISO is counted in alphabetical order. Exactly right. ISO, cyclo, for alphabetical order. And it's very important that you noted that. Thank you. So let's try to get some proposed names in the chat or verbally and we have to provide works. Sorry about that. There was a small 
um, disconnect in the microphone feature. Um, so does anyone have any questions? I don't see any proposed responses yet in the chat. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the numbering methods and I'd like you to tell me the name and number of each of these substituents. Sorry. Uh, sorry, could you mute? There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so could someone please tell me the name and number of each of our substituents? So what substituents do we have on our longest carbon chain? So we have a proposed name of 5-cyclopentyl, 4-isopropyl, 6-7-dimethyl. Okay, so let's look at our two numbering methods. So on carbon 4, we have an isopropyl. The I in isopropyl is counted. 5-cyclopentyl. 6-methyl and that's it. Okay, looking at the red numbering method, we have 4-methyl, 6-isopropyl, and then 5-cyclopentyl. So looking at these numbering methods, if we follow alphabetical order, which numbering method places our substituent that's first in alphabetical order with the lowest number? The numbering method in black or red? Which numbering method is preferred? What do we think? Which numbering method in either black or red is preferred? If we look at alphabetical order, what's first alphabetically, I or M? The numbering method in black, exactly right. So we call this 4-isopropyl, 5-cyclopentyl. Oh, wait, sorry, 5-cyclopentyl has to be in front because cyclo is before. But cyclo has the same number in both cases. So we call this 5-cyclopentyl, 4-isopropyl, 6-methyl, nonane. So as we see, cyclopentyl, which is first alphabetically, has the same number in each case. We look at our first locant number, and we choose to place isopropyl with the smaller locant number because it's first alphabetically. And that in turn gives us our final name. And the responses that I saw in the chat were great so far. So this is a good stopping point for our supplemental lecture.